All right. Uh, no, she has not started. I think. Once you start the recording, let me know. Oh, it has started. I'm sorry. It's all a smooth transition. So, uh, namaste, everybody. And uh, we are going to continue uh, from where we left off last time. All right. So, uh, uh, let's uh, do the Guru Mantra three times. Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave. So namaste everybody. Uh, in the first session, uh, we discussed the importance of the Tithi Lord uh, when it is associated with Ketu or when the seventh Lord is associated with Ketu or when the Tithi Lord is associated with the eighth Lord because the eighth Lord is like Ketu. And we saw that in all those cases, uh, Ketu has a shunya effect on the water. The water evaporates and a marriage becomes problematic. Either there is no marriage or inside the marriage, uh, we feel that it is a much more uh, spiritual or friendly path or there is a lot of huge suffering in it. We ended this discussion and after that, uh, the next section, which was actually allotted to be discussed today. I had just raised the issue and I think I just spoke for five minutes on the counting of marriage. And I believe uh, from what I heard from a couple of you that the screen also had got frozen. It's so probably that was a nimitta because I was not supposed to start it last class. That session is for today. So we will go over that, the rules, and we will go over a lot of charts and the com complexities. <coughs> that arises therefrom. And the second thing that I'm going to do is address some questions. So since I did not address questions last time, I'm going to address questions here. So um, I have one or two questions which address certain major areas. So I have incorporated that in my talk. And if there are any more major questions, not like very minor ones, but major ones. So those I will address uh, in the talk today. And any minor ones, we can always discuss it in the forum. So, after having talked about marriages going shunya, relationships going shunya, no water, all smoke and fire, and we discuss uh, the horoscopes of very spiritual souls, right? Uh, who though were married but then left, or who were married and there was no marriage, and some people who had let Sansar since they were a few four or five year old children. So we have examined all of this. Now we're going to examine the other side. And that is what happens when there are multiple marriages. Okay. And in that context, we are going to study the principle of the village technique of counting the number of marriages. So I'm going to straight away go to that section. Okay, so now the basic rule that we did, it's very simple actually. We need to check the Rashi where the seventh lord is placed. And I'm talking about the Rashi chakra, the D1 chart. And then I will need to check the Rashi of this seventh lord in the Navamsha. Okay, so I'm not examining the seventh lord of the Navamsha. My only focus is the seventh lord of the Rashi chart which sign is it in D1 and which sign is it in Navamsha. So the sign it is in, in D1, I will call that sign A. And the sign that it is in Navamsha, I will call that sign B. And I will count from A to B. And that number is supposed to give me the number of marriages. All right. Now there are many... Uh, factors, riders, modifications to this, which I'm going to go over. 
So a question comes in, what do we mean by marriages? Marriages, of course, as we count, whether from Upabada, whether, uh, you know, for any other purposes from the Rashi chart, it only includes coveted and serious relationships, which should last for at least for the duration of one year. Minimally for the duration of one year, if you seriously like somebody, even though they may not, I mean, you need not have moved in with the person or lived with the person, but you seriously like somebody, you are committed to the person, you really wanted that this relationship should go somewhere, maybe towards a marriage or a commitment if this works out. Perhaps it hasn't worked out beyond the year, well and good. Okay. Sometimes it happens, and this was actually brought up by Deborah, because this works in a horoscope, and she said that though I had X number of relations, which was serious, but I only felt like as if three or four of them were the real relationship. You know, they felt like marriages. So then the number also fitted in over there. Uh, it has happened to another person's chart, you know, a friend's chart I was looking at. And uh, I mean, actually, I was seeing this with uh, Guruji. And uh, that person has had, before she got married, she's had three major relationships. So with marriage, it should be four. But I think in the count, it is showing three. So then he pointed out to me that it's very probably that actually only uh, three of these relationships, all right, two of the three relationships uh, uh, prior to the marriage were actually like a marriage. Maybe one of them was nothing, but maybe just a college infatuation. Maybe uh, the person was with the person, uh, with the spouse for a long time, but the relationship was very spurious. There was nothing much in it. It never felt like a marriage to the person native concern. So though native technically has four marriages, but in reality, it was actually three. And then if you consider parivartanas, it can also get reduced to two. So we do have to take this into consideration. Rosemary asked the question of Parivartana. So Rosemary, you will see I have taken that uh, horoscope example out here where the Parivartana actually is a very important thing. So as I said that this, when you are counting, I've written this line over here, I should have put it in bold, that reflect carefully and decide which are the ones you consider as marriages, all right? Which are the ones? So you can say, uh, that okay, I was with a person for five years or three years, you know, but I it was really no connection of mind or soul or body. I didn't even feel that it was a marriage, and somehow in your mind, if it wasn't, maybe you are not counting as that, and maybe you had another relationship which was just for one year, and that was very serious, very committed, very karmic. So that would definitely count. So I hope this is a very important point because I think most of the time I get questions like this. And I think even in the forum, we get questions like this is that, oh, but I had five marriages and four are showing, or I had six major relationships, but five are showing. But then if you think you'll see that that makes sense, that actually those five were real. Sometimes the actual marriages also show up. The second thing that you must keep in mind over here is your Navamsha. Is your Navamsha rectified? All right. Of course, we are counting Rashi to Rashi. So in that sense, the Navamsha rectification should not matter so much. But what about you heard Rashi chart? Some people have horoscopes with like uh, with the ascendant degree at one degree something, right? Zero degree something. So this is perhaps a very another tool for you to uh, examine uh, which lagna you are. Many of you have your Rashi lagnas in such minute borders and you're so confused. Uh, doing this rectification is a very huge process because you have to go through uh, all aspects of your uh, life. But this is another tool that you can rectify it with, <clears throat> okay? Uh, what about when we are doing horoscopes of famous people? And many famous people's horoscope require minor uh, rectifications, especially if the birth time is really at the border, really at the Gandanta, Sandhi of two Lagnas, then definitely this would be 
a very big help for you to rectify okay so let us go on to the first chart which i had very briefly uh, you know glossed over in the last session because as i said this topic was reserved for today's session so uh, <clears throat> this is henry the eighth now you will see that i have taken a few charts at least five or six charts all with multiple marriages six marriages seven marriages eight marriages nine marriages i have taken cases like that in these cases i have found that this principle more or less works very well okay in many other cases you have to be sure of the birth time you have to be sure of the rect rectification if there are public figures okay if it is of course uh, there are horoscopes belonging to you or maybe to your family members where the birth time is more or less known okay but you may have to do some minor rectification you can look into it in all these cases that i'm going to put up to you you would see a very interesting part that in many cases the tithi lord is the seventh lord right what does this mean the tithi lord is the seventh lord see when we were doing the first factor when we were talking about the ketu factor there we were seeing that the tithi lord is either associated or sorry yuti tithi lord is yuti or conjoined ketu or Tithi Lord is Yuti or conjoined Eighth Lord because Eighth Lord we discussed was like Ketu, right? So when this Yuti is there, we are seeing that we are getting a spectrum of marriages which are like no marriages. Thakur Sri Ramakrishna married but did not even call his wife. And wife arrived on her own after many years and stayed separately. There was no consummation of marriage over there srila prabhupada married had a full life and children but then left everything and became a very well-known sannyasi and established so many uh, gorya centers all over the world and spread and gave the Hare krishna mantra to so many he is known as that all right yet he never knew why he was never attracted to his wife he didn't know, so he wanted to marry a second time. Okay, then we have cases like of Swami Vivekananda, of Chandra Shekhar and Saraswati, who people never married. Jagat Guru Chandra Shekhar and Saraswati Swami girl left his uh, home. He was taken from his home at a tender age of probably five or three or seven and taken straight away as a prospective Shankaracharya. Swami Vivekananda was in the uh, meditative path right from the beginning and did not get married at all. And then there were many other people who discussed who were married, but that marriage was held. They were married, but the marriage was held. It was shunya. There was no passion. There was no physical relationship. One of the spouses is very spiritual. And as long as the spirituality and physical distance is maintained, Ketu is happy and the marriage is there or the marriage disappears. It's all Ketu. We are talking about no marriage or even if technically there is a marriage, there is really no either consummation of marriage. If there is consummation of marriage, there is no attraction or beyond the point there is a separation. One of the spouse goes in a spiritual path, they are friends right we are talking about that but here now we are going to talk about people who are married many times six times seven times eight times nine times you will see and here what are we getting that the tithi lord is the same as the seventh lord because if the eighth lord is like ketu then the seventh lord is like shukra isn't it shukra is all jala so tithi lord which is jala when conjoined eighth lord, it is becoming uh, like Ketu and evaporating and becoming smoke. But when it is conjoined seventh lord, which is Venus, like Venus, then there is more Jala. And when there is more Jala, there is more emotion, there is more fun, there is more uh, bonhomie that is going on out there. Right? You will observe it for yourself. Most of these cases of many number of marriages 
PP load and E7 load are almost similar out here. Okay, we have touched upon Henry VIII's chart, six marriages. Tithi Lord is Rahu, and you can see Rahu is also the seventh Lord, hence he had so many marriages. All right. Uh, and briefly, we talked about uh, he has uh, six recognized uh, wives, recognized marriages, and uh, this is, uh, you know, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, died. So Catherine of Aragon, who was from Spain, who was his first wife. Catherine of Aragon, he actually, there was a divorce over there. There was issue of Catholicism, and he, of course, was not a Catholic. On grounds of that, Catherine Aragon divorced. Uh, Anne Willeen, who was Catherine Aragon's handmaiden, and uh, he had married her. And uh, then Anne Willeen, of course, uh, went on a different path and had other lovers and other uh, ambitions and Anne Boleyn was beheaded. Then there was Jane Seymour who died, whom he liked very much and died. Then there was Anne of Cleves. Anne of Cleves he was not attracted to, so they say that marriage was not consummated. It was kind of uh, an aunt. That was a marriage of, it was a political marriage. All right. Then there was Catherine Howard who was beheaded. And then the last wife was Catherine Parr. And Catherine Parr also died. Uh, as far as I know, in maybe in childbirth. So what happens when there is dual lordship, all right? When there is dual lordship and uh, one of the lords is the Tithi Lord, because many of you have this question, then we take the other lord for counting, okay? This for counting, many of you thought that it applied only when the seventh house had dual lordship, but that's not what it, applies to all right it is not it is for any seventh lord this principle is for any seventh lord so we can all apply this in our horoscopes and we can check and see whether that works right but in cases where there is dual lordship and in that dual lordship one of them is the tithi lord in such a case we take the other lord if one of them is not the tithi lord then of course you will look into both the lords and examine which one gives you the correct answer. In this case, you can see <clears throat> Tithi Lord Rahu is also the seventh Lord. Hence, we will not take Rahu, we will take Shani. And Shani here is in Makara, very strong. Seventh Lord is very, very strong out here. All right, it is in Makara. And in Navamsha, we can see Shani is in Mithuna. Okay, and so if you come from uh, Makara to Mithuna, you get six. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. We get six. So he had six marriages. This is a very, uh, a case which kind of fits in very neatly. Again, there were questions I had from people. Do we count the first sign? Do we count the second sign? We count everything, but we have to see uh, in this case, as we saw, the six, uh, the six marriages works in very well. Now, at, while we are at it, it's very interesting to see the Tithi Lord Rahu, if you can see, it is uh, in Ayush debilitation. So you can see that amongst six wives, only two were divorced and the rest four were either beheaded or they died. So one of those lords is in Ayush debilitation. You must take a note of that. Okay. Now, let's try and see another chart. Now, this is the chart of Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor's Tithi Lord, as you can see, is Shukra. Krishna Shashti, lorded by Venus. Again, in this case, the seventh Lord is the Tithi Lord. Have you seen people who tend to have more than six marriages between six to nine marriages, the Tithi Lord happens to be the seventh Lord as well. So that means that Jala element is very strong. There is no Ketu element. There is no smoke element out here. The water element is very strong. There is a whole flood. There is a tsunami, is it? Whole flood, too much water. <clears throat> Again, in the same case, if Venus 
is the Tithi Lord, then I will not take Venus, but I will take Chandra or Moon, because we take Moon to be the co-lord of Taurus. Many of you may not be aware of that. So if we are taking Moon to be the co-lord of Taurus, we can see that Moon is in Tula Rashi in D1, and in Navamsha, it is in Mesha Amsha, right? So if I count from Tula to Mesha, it comes seven. So seven marriages, yes, as I've given you over here, she has had seven marriages. But there's something that you hear. Conrad Hilton, one. Michael Wilden, two. Mike Todd, three. Eddie Fisher, four. Richard Burton, five. John Warner, six. And Larry Potensky, seven. There are seven uh, men that she married. But all of you may or may not know that she married Richard Burton twice. So she first married Richard Burton in 64, divorced him after 10 years in 74. Then again married him in 75 and then divorced him again in 76 within a year. So, I mean, here I'm counting this as one. I mean, she divorced him in 74 and within a year or less than a year, she marries him again. I don't think there was probably anybody in between that. And she immediately married him again, probably thought that they had made a mistake in getting divorced. So she marries him again. And so uh, this actually, though legally there was a separation, we are counting this as one. So seven marriages, and again in her horoscope as well, we can see that it fits in. Seven marriages are very, very clear. Uh, if we want to look at her Tithi Lord and Venus, as you can see, it is uh, exalted out here. All right, and it is with Rahu. What does this association of Venus with Rahu mean? That it means that she has also had affairs while she was uh, in marriage or she has had affairs with people who are married. All right, if you have an affair with somebody who is already married and living with a partner, or if you yourself are living with a partner and you have an affair, then there is a Venus Rahu conjunction over there somewhere. It shows up because Rahu is all about crossing the borders. Okay, so in this horoscope also, uh, we can see that uh, this has worked out. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, you know, these are just extra points to uh, sort of kind of draw your attention to. Uh, you can see that Venus in the, is in the fifth house of love. The fifth house is considered the fifth house of love. So Panchama Shukra. And we can see Chandra has gone to the 12th house. Now, Chandra, per se, moon in the 12th house is not a very good placement. We consider the placement of moon in the 6th house, 8th house, and 12th house to be not desirable, right? For many things, for our health, longevity, for a good life. But whereas we also know that the 12th house, Grahas in the 12th house, uh, the Lord of the Twelfth House. The, this is, uh, these grahas can give us marriage. And why does it give us marriage? Because the Twelfth House is also the nuptial bed. You know, the, uh, the nakshatra, the Bhadrapadas over there, the two nakshatras, they actually show two components of a bed. And that bed can not only be the death bed, and the hospital bed, but it is also the marriage bed. So the bed pleasures and the kind of sexual relationship you have is seen over there. And that is why we often say that if those graha, that is a graha in the 12th house, a graha of the 12th Lord itself, uh, they, that is the priest, that planet is very eager to see that you get married to your partner. So you may meet somebody and you can get attracted to somebody, but you're not marrying that somebody. So Grahas in the 12th house and the 12th Lord are very, very interested to see that you get married. They act like the priest. They are the priest who wants to drag you to the altar. Okay, so many times uh, one gets married during the Antardasha uh, of either, say, Grahas in the 12th house or of the 12th Lord. Now here you can see our 7th Lord Moon has gone to the 12th house and it is Moon. Moon is, you know, your Jalagraha over there. So these people, these women, uh, you know, whose horoscopes I will be sharing further, they're largely women now I will be sharing. They were all very beautiful, very glamorous. They were all of personalities, okay? Uh, very passionate, uh, very sensual. And, you know, with their kind of pa uh, personality, they 
just uh, you know loved having admirers loved getting married and so men were also very much attracted to her they were divas all of them you know so that shukra chandra thing was very powerful of course we also know there's one factor that whenever venus is exalted it means that this person is looking for an ideal spouse in either a man's chart or a woman's chart if shukra is exalted it means that you are looking for an ideal partner such people also sometimes tend to have multiple relationships because they are looking for the ideal partner but that's no excuse all right everybody doesn't do that so liz taylor elizabeth taylor was also very much such a personality okay now let, let us look at another chart now zaza gabor zaza gabor was also a very well-known film actor of hollywood and she is really renowned for having nine marriages so there are some people who had nine marriages you know it's not just i think she's one of the highest there's i think one or two other people more over there who's uh, married nine times now here we can see the tithi lord is shani all right again you can see shakti lord is also the seventh lord so you can see marriages more than six times this is the third horoscope we are seeing where the tithi lord is also the seventh lord okay so now if tithi lord is the uh, seventh lord and here also just like this taylor that graha shani seventh lord and tithi lord has gone to seventh lord has gone to the uh 12th house so we have to take the other lord right and the other lord in this case is rahu now here you can see rahu is in dhanu rashi and in navamsha all right rahu is in scorpio so that means if you are going to count from dhanu to scorpio we are getting the number 12 okay but she was married nine times plus there was an affair with a stepson who was the son of one of her spouses so these are like kind of declared 10 relationship but uh, how do we know my question is that maybe there were two other relationships which were very serious and which were like marriages but she didn't get married to them maybe it was there isn't it because if somebody has such a strong uh, yoga for multiple marriages and you know i uh, actually really wanted to share her quotes with you all and she said that i love being married i just love being married i just love having men around me and uh, i love cooking for them so uh, it it's it, she was again also as you can see from the picture very beautiful they were all larger than life personality all very attractive and she says my whole life is about marriages and she just enjoyed it she never get tired now there are people who can hardly deal with one marriage and here she is hopping from marriage to marriage to marriage perfectly happy and uh, perfectly delighted so my point is this is my question and i think so one of her spouses you know you can see the names out here of her marriages that i've got to you here you can see her second marriage was with conrad hall hilton senior conrad hilton was also married to elizabeth taylor all right so now whether it is this conrad hilton senior probably was conrad hilton junior that liz taylor was married to but conrad hilton had a son called nick hilton and apparently uh, liz taylor had a sexual relationship with nick hilton so if we uh, count nick hilton we are getting 10 because there are nine marriages plus nick hilton we are 10 and i feel that maybe there were a couple of more marriages over there maybe very powerful or strong relationships perhaps were there and uh, in that sense that uh, you know uh, which is which maybe we do not know about okay maybe we do not know about that you can see that rahu is debilitated out here the seventh lord mm -hmm. seventh lord is debilitated in rashi it is an ayush debilitation in navamsha so that seventh lord is uh, does not bode very, very well but saturn as you can see again has gone to the 12th house and it is conjoined a very powerful moon over there okay very very powerful moon 
normally those of you who are doing PGSE and later on Gemini also, basically what we do is these are very good examples to actually when you're counting marriages, learning to count marriages in the chart, then you can match with the years and the names and see where it goes. But this is the third chart in running that we are seeing that the seventh lord is also the Tithi lord. Now, this is another case of uh, nine marriages. This is a, a very beautiful actor called Jennifer O'Neill. Uh, those of you seen Summer of 42, she was an actor in Summer of 42. Now, her Tithi lord is Chandra. Okay? Tithi Lord is Chandra. Again, you can see Tithi Lord is Seventh Lord. This is the fourth chart that we are seeing, right? That Tithi Lord and Seventh Lord uh, are the same. And, uh, you know, maybe later on, there are more horoscopes and maybe I can share them with you. So Tithi Lord and Seventh Lord is the same again. And what we shall do is we shall not take Chandra. We shall take the other Tithi Lord, which is Shukra. Again, you can see Shukra has gone to the fifth house of love. Again, Shukra is exalted out here. So it is in Meena. And uh, in the Navamsha, it is in Dhanu. Okay. Now, if we come from Meena to Dhanu, we are getting a count of 10. Uh, she had nine marriages. All right. And uh, again, uh, maybe... There was one relationship which is very senior, serious, which is not shown. Now, the interesting thing is, she was actually also married to eight men. So, uh, Richard Allen Brown, she married twice. Okay. So, now if we are taking Richard Allen Brown, also the two marriages, we are getting actually nine. So, it is one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. In Liz Taylor's case, it was back to back. Like she divorced Richard Burton and within a few months she married him again. Here you can see she divorced Richard Allen Brown in 89 and then in 92 she got married to Neil Bonin and that marriage was uh, annulled and then again she went back to marrying Richard Allen Brown. So there was another relationship in between. You can see how beautiful and glamorous uh, Jennifer O'Neill is. And uh, so we have nine marriages here. And uh, and it, our count says 10. So, you know, it very well could have been there was somebody else, okay, uh, with uh, whom she had a serious relationship. Maybe did not marry uh, on pen and paper. And that's why it is not registered. All right. So you can see here, Venus is exalted in the fifth house and you can see that the uh, Chandra has gone into the eighth. That kind of also shows that breakages of marriages, a lot of divorces, a lot of separation, maybe deaths, those kind of things. Okay. Now, here is another very well-known actor called uh, Mickey Rooney. Now, Mickey Rooney, again, had eight marriages. We can see that the Tithi Lord is Mangal. Here, the Tithi Lord, okay? Here, the Tithi Lord and the Seventh Lord is not the same. But the Tithi Lord is very strong. It is in the 12th house. And it is the 12th Lord in the 12th house. It is Swashetra, so it's pretty strong out there. We have seen that in multiple cases that the Tithi Lord has gone to the 12th house also. So we have to take the 7th Lord as Buddha, Mercury. And Mercury is there in Kanya, in Virgo. And in Navamsha, Mercury is there in Mithuna. Right? Again, we are getting a count of 10. If we come from Virgo to Gemini, we are getting a count of 10. But on pen and paper here, we have about uh, eight marriages. So my question here would be that, you know, these people uh, who are, uh, you know, getting uh, so many marriages, like seven marriages, eight marriages, nine marriages, how are you actually counting? That means you are getting into relationships 
with so many people. You are actually living with them and uh, having a sansara with so many people. So obviously there may be a couple of, couple of two or three more on the side who you probably had a torrid affair with, but you lived with, probably thought you'd get married to, but it didn't work out. So it's not mentioned here because it was not a legal marriage. So it can be that there were a couple of other serious relationships. All right. And uh, if you want to see the condition of the Tithi Lord, I told you that the Tithi Lord is very well placed in Scorpio. Seventh Lord here, I don't have the degrees here to show you. Seventh Lord here uh, probably may be combust also, for all you know. It is there with Venus, a debilitated Venus, which is doing a Nicha Bhanga too. And it is very powerful. You can see that it is in Kanya Rashi, in the Rashi chart and in Mithuna. So it's a very powerful Mercury. And uh, which means that he was a very good actor. If you've seen Mickey Rooney's movie, you will know that he was a very, very good actor. Okay, now here I decided to also bring forward to you uh, Srila Prabhupada's horoscope. All right, if you look at Srila Prabhupada's horoscope, he was married, right? He was married, he lived with Radharani Devi, and he had uh, five children so uh, and it was only much much later that he gave up his job sold his factories etc and that he came back and he uh, became a sannyasi now his tithi lord out here is surya we had studied how the tithi lord is conjoined ketu so we are not going to go to that part of the discussion we will examine his seventh lord and we see his seventh lord is in virgo in Navamsha, his seventh lord is in Mars. So if it is in Virgo and we come from Virgo to Mars, then it comes to eight. So in no way that, uh, you know, this actually matches because he was only married once and he got married, you know, when he was about 20, 21, he was still a student. <clears throat> so, but if you look very carefully, you will see that there is a parivartana between uh, Mars and uh, Mercury. So if there is a parivartana between Mars and Mercury, then Mercury is coming out over here in Mithuna. So you will need to look at these calculations very, very carefully. And you will also need to see the other parts of the chart. In this horoscopes, in what you first need to see, if the Tithi Lord or the Seventh Lord is Yuti Ketu, because then that factor is very strong and is going to override other things. Okay, it is going to override other things because that effect is very powerful. For example, like in Srila Prabhupada's case, it is extremely powerful because it is in the ninth house. The Tithi Lord is the ninth Lord Surya in Sashitra in its own sign. And conjoined, you can see an almost exalted Ketu out there. So the powerful, it is very, very powerful out here. Okay, so this combination has overridden all other combinations. So that is why. Uh, when he married his wife, his wife was very young and he didn't find her attractive. He said there was nothing wrong with her. She was a very faithful lady, but he did not wish to marry her. I mean, he just did not want to, you know, consummate the marriage with her. So he wanted to marry again. And his father said no. So he eventually settled down with her. He had several children with her. He was very caught up with the family business. Eventually the family business went bankrupt and it all became Ketu. It actually, he tried, he really tried and he opened and reopened, um, uh, you know, his factories, but they never worked out. <clears throat> All right. And these factories uh, completely, uh, they became bankrupt and it had to shut up. And much later, of course, he took Diksha, then he got Sanyasa Diksha. All right. And then on to become a full-fledged monastic member and he went abroad and he set up so many centers. So that factor, and I had mentioned to you that this yoga is a temple building yoga. So these factors are very, very, very important. And don't forget that Rahu is also his Atma Karika. Very important. So I would say that this combination really uh, dominates the chart. All right. And also the fact that 
<clears throat> that this combination Mercury and Venus six from Arura Lagna, which is a combination for renouncing. We have discussed all these factors in great detail. So <clears throat> I'm not going to go into that again. But what I'm saying is that this becomes a strong. This comes uh, forward. Okay. <clears throat> so you will need to be very careful when you are doing this counting. So many factors to be taken into consideration. Now, if I look at Thakur Ramakrishna's chart, okay. In Thakur's Ramakrishna's chart, as I explained to you, that he was <clears throat> married when he was very young and his wife was nine. And when the time came for his wife to be sent to him, he said, no, no, no need for her to come because I'm living in a temple and I'm a priest over there in Calcutta. But after many, many years, the wife, when she grew up and was in her 20s, she decided to come. She said, let me go there and I will aid him in his spiritual work. So she came to Calcutta. She also lived in the temple complex, but lived in a completely different uh, building altogether. Okay, but nevertheless, it was a marriage. Now, can we call it a marriage? They never stayed together. There was no consummation of marriage. Are you getting the point? Can we call it a marriage? If you are talking about Parivartana, there is no direct Parivartana between Surya. But you can see that Surya's dispositor, Jupiter and Saturn are in Parivartana. Okay, this is the several things that you must keep in mind. Now, there is a, another very uh, uh, important uh, question which was raised by uh, more than two people. Excuse me. <clears throat> and this question was that when we discussed about the impact of Ketu, Right, how everything becomes a smoke out there, everything becomes junior. Two or three people ask me, What is the remedy? Now, for this, I need to go a little bit in depth. Of course, it is, uh, it would need to be tailor made according to your horoscope. But one very primary remedy is that uh, the dichotomy here or the opposition uh -huh, over here is between Shukra and Ketu. All right, Shukra and Ketu is the pair who are opposed to each other. You know, the Rishi has told us that uh, Ketu holds a very high power that he can destroy the Rajas Grahas, Shukra and Buddha. So Shukra and Ketu have this very peculiar relationship. Shuk Ketu is everything that Shukra is not, right? Ketu is everything that Chandra is not. So Shukra is full of water. Her Shukra is beautiful. Shukra loves harmony. Shukra loves marriages. Shukra loves relationships between any people. All Shukra wants is, as Lord of Tula, that everybody should be calm, everybody should be married. He's a Lord of the Seventh House. People should get along with each other very harmoniously. Shukra, as Lord of Taurus, would love to wear jewelry. Lord of Tula would love to wear beautiful clothes, uh, have a beautiful uh, marriage, have perhaps more than one marriage, have lots of relationships if, if you know, the horoscope permits, uh, likes love and romance and candlelight and passion and Shukra, so many things. Ketu is absolutely the opposite. If you read Parashara, you will read the description that Ketu wears tattered clothes, where Shukra loves to wear beautiful clothes, have many clothes. I have 300 shirts, I have 100 shoes, I have 200 beautiful dresses. They're all beautiful, all with beautiful colors. I love to dress up. Ketu is the yogi, you know, one tattered cloth, one, you know, we have the description that his clothes may be like a, uh, you know, like a, Dhabal, you know, like the Anga, you know, like these one piece things that you wear, like a Fedan, and it is composed of uh, patched up material because there is uh, no money and the cloth has gone torn. So I take a bit of cloth from here and there and patch it up and wear it. So the wandering minstrel wears that in many cases we see pictures. That is Ketu. So see everything about Ketu and Shukra. Ketu does not like love or romance or sex or home or husband doesn't like. 
okay? Basically, inertly, Ketu doesn't like these things. So the only way we can really control Ketu, a very fundamental principle, is we need to expand and enhance Venus. You really need to enhance Venus. And if you really enhance Venus, then Ketu will go down. Because there is a tug of war. Ketu does have the capacity to completely subjugate and control Shukra, to completely destroy Shukra. So Shukra has to be very strong that Ketu doesn't do that. So one remedy would definitely be so. Also Shukra is Jalatattva. So we are increasing the Jalatattva. Remember one thing, that blemishes in the horoscope, all right, all kind of problems and blemishes in the horoscope uh, where, where it relates to relationships is a affliction of the uh, water element. It is a jala tattva dosha. It's a jala tattva affliction. So our main remedy is to remedy the jala tattva. Remedy the jala tattva. Moment you remedy the jala tattva, things will become big, very good. Ketu will then not have an upper hand to do anything. So not to, how will you expand the jala tattva? So definitely, you know, you will need to propitiate shukra out there. You need to do shukra mantra. Which shukra mantra will I do? Please, for heaven's sakes, look in your horoscope and see what is the condition of shukra in your chart and accordingly do a shukra mantra. Wear clothes uh, which are beautiful, use floral motors, use pretty colors, wear jewelry, do shingar. Where women are concerned, women, please do shingar. All right. Um, uh, use perfumes, uh, take care of yourself. All right, go to the salon, take care of yourself, don't hang around with me. Uh, very, very live remedy, I'm telling you. Uh, whenever I, uh, you know, my hair is like that in white, my husband tells me, Guruji tells me that, oh no, you know, Ketu's becoming strong, too much of gray hair. You should really touch up your hair and color it, then Ketu will be under subjugation. When we are discussing this with a family member, they don't understand this. They just think it's a sign of beautification. It is a sign of beautification, but it is a sign of beautification. The intention is with a remedial purpose that I am keeping my shukra in check. I have to sure I dress up properly. I dress in a certain way. Even if I don't want, otherwise Ketu and later on even Shani will become stronger. As long as you're doing your Shingar, where a woman is concerned, Ketu, Shukra is strong. All right. Use perfumes, use flowers, have flowers in the house. So many ways. And Shukra Mantra, depending on how Venus is in the horoscope, because there are so many kinds of Shukra Mantras. Those who have very afflicted Venuses, Venus afflicted by Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu, then you know they need to go into doing Mahavidya mantras like Kamala, Kamala Ma mantra, uh, you know, Kamalatmika mantra for that, uh, in order to, uh, you know, really rectify a Venus from its uh, afflicted uh, state. Otherwise, if a Venus is more or less okay, then you know, you can do the, uh, the, the, the mantra that I had put up right in the beginning of my slide out here. This mantra, Om Ashrin Rin Shrin Kamale Kamalalaye Prasida Prasida Om Ashrin Rin Shrin Mahalakshmai Nama Om Ashrin Rin Shrin Kamale Kamalalaye Prasida Prasida Om Ashrin Rin Shrin Mahalakshmai Nama Now you know why I put this mantra in the beginning. Because last class, I was going so much deeply into Ketu. I said, I, my, it was very scary. Because when we talk about somebody, when we're talking so strongly about Grahas, we are evoking and activating those Grahas and the Grahas come into our life. So right in the beginning, I did my remedy. I wonder how many of you noticed it. Guruji uh, recently, uh, whether it was in the Shiva Mahapuran course or whether it was uh, some other uh, talk very recently, Guruji did a lot of talk on Mangal and he also, you would have noticed, had a big small picture of Lakshmi and he just quickly said, Om Shri Mahalakshmi Nama. Yes, I think it was a Shiva Mahapuran course webinar where he was talking about the Bhairavas and Right, and he was, I'm really not recording, he was talking about the Bhairavas and it was entirely to do with Mangal. And he said, he said, you know, my heart shook 
I'm going to be discussing this so much of Mangal. So he will put the Mahalakshmi picture and very small mantra Om Shri Mahalakshmi Nama. Under his breath, he had said Om Shri Mahalakshmi Nama went to the slide. I wonder how many of you noticed it. I said my mantra louder. I ensured my Venus is afflicted. Oh God, I do not want to take any chances. Do the remedy. Do the remedy. Worship Shri Mahalakshmi. This particular deity that you are seeing on my slide, this is Padmavati. All right. Padmavati is the consort of uh, Venkateshwara, who resides in Tirupati, also known as Balaji. This is his Shakti. He is married to her. And every Friday they have a marriage, which is known as uh, symbolic Abhishekam, known as the uh, Srinivasa Padmavati Kalyanam. So, Padmavati is actually very strong with Durga energy. All right. Padmavati is very Durga energy. You can see her complexion. And uh, if you see why uh, it suits my horoscope, because I have Shukra conjoined Rahu and aspected by <coughs> Shani. So uh, that, that kind of uh, combination calls for a little bit of a stronger form of Mahalakshmi. Mahalakshmi is Durga energy. Lakshmi is Pujagari, pure Lakshmi, Shri energy. All right. So I can do, which I did, Kamalatmika Mahavidya. So what happens in your Rashi chart? If your Shukra uh, it has the Grahadrishti or the conjunction of two or more natural benefits, like between Rahu, Ketu, Shani, Mangal, Okay, and if especially if it is either the eighth lord or the Atma Karaka, you can definitely go ahead and just do the Kamalatmika mantra. Those who are Jyotishis and in the uh, field uh, of uh, doing mantras, and those of you know already, they can even do the sadhana. Otherwise, sadhana is not advised for everybody. The mantra is very, very important. So you can do Om, Aim, Rim, Shim, Tim, Haso, Jagat, Prasutte. So the Jagat, Prasuti mantra can be done. All right. Otherwise, uh, this form of Padmavati is also a Durga energy. Shukra with any of, of these. Uh, Planets, natural malefics, you can do this. Om Shreem Dream Shreem Kamale Kamalalaye Prasida Prasida Om Shreem Dream Shreem Mahalakshmi Nama. This is one of the most beautiful mantras for Kamala Lakshmi. Beautiful mantra of Lakshmi. Again, Durga Rupa, very beautiful. This mantra anybody can do, and this is Sakshat Lakshmi appears out there. If you can't do, you can just do. Om Shri Mahalakshmi Nama. All right. Those of you cannot do, just do Om Shri Mahalakshmi Nama. But you will need to worship Lakshmi in order to control Ketu. There is absolutely no way out. And it's very beautiful. We are discussing this today on a Friday. Okay. Uh, Venus is said to be really, if we are talking in another aspect, a Mahavidya kind of energy, but in a more direct Devata categorization, Venus represents Lakshmi. Okay. Uh, Venus's Mool Mantra is Shreem. And it is very interesting that Shreem is also the Graha Bija for Chandra. And it is the Mool Mantra for Lakshmi. But then Lakshmi and Chandra uh, actually were born almost together uh, during the churning of the ocean in Samudra Mantana. So Lakshmi uh, is also known as Chandra Sahodari. Sahodari means sibling. So she's the sibling of Chandra. So as sibling of Chandra, her Mool Mantra is Shri. Uh, one, of, one of her main Mool Mantras is Shri. And it is the Graha Bija for Chandra also. If you recite, if you do the meditation on Shreem Bija, they say all the malefic, especially those who have been as afflicted by Mars, right? If you have Venus afflicted by Mars, if you have Mars afflicting your seventh house, Mars in seventh house, Mars have uh, Vrishti on seventh house, kind of Manglik kind of doshas, then the <clears throat> very prime remedy or mantra for that would be if you do Shreem Bija meditation. 
Shrim Bija meditation will completely cleanse the seventh house and it will, it's a very good remedy for Mangal, which is an MKS or any Mangal which is really damaging uh, your uh, Venus. Okay, so the remedy would be to empower Shukra. Uh, as I, and I give you practical lifestyle remedies, the kind of clothes you wear, do Shringar, use perfumes, uh, wear jewelry, pay focus on your clothes, buy more clothes, all right? Entertain people, be harmonious in relationships, hold a lunch and dinner party, Andam rice of rice is signified with rice as well, white rice, have white rice, offer white rice, you can do all these things. Flowers, all right, Sugandhim, all this is associated with her. Have much more water element because after all, we are trying to remedy water. You can have, uh, you know, <clears throat> for us uh, in Delhi and uh, in the entire Northern Belt, actually this customers come from Rajasthan. Rajasthan, as you would know, was a, is a desert area. And Delhi is also a semi-desert area. Now the weather of Delhi has changed because with so much of green tree plantation and things like that. So even when the Mughals came, you know, at that time they would, they had this practice and the Rajas Rajputs also had the practice. They would have these huge pots, these huge brass vessels or, uh, uh, you know, they use metal vessels or you can also have other vessels, huge massive, filled with water in different parts of the house and they would have rose petals on it and uh, marigold flowers on it, any kind of beautiful flowers on it. This has become, of course, now a trend. So in here, if you go for marriage celebration, marriage is very big in India. In marriage celebrations, you will see these things, but this is the practice. And in Delhi also, this practice is followed a lot. If you go to people's houses, they do it. I also do it because being a very dry, semi-arid region, we are trying to create more moisture and we put water. Now, why I'm saying this, that this is translatable also into a Shukra Jalata remedy. Have beautiful crystal vases, beautiful crystal vases, and put water in it, put a drop of some perfume in it, and put flowers and petals in it. Do not light the candle on it. This is a little bit of a Jalagan, a Gandanta dosha that happens. So for you all, no candles on it, but you can have this at your entrances, in your sitting rooms, in critical junctures of your uh, houses, all right, it's a very, very beautiful thing. But you must be aware that uh, these uh, uh, water should never get stagnant. That is another remedy. So especially for those of you who do puja, ensure that you're changing the water that is in the Achman Patra that you're offering to the deity. That water must be changed once a day in the morning when you're doing puja. Otherwise, the waters become stagnant. Stagnant water is afflicted shukra. Okay, many people, traditional families, would have very big uh, swimming pools. Uh, we know of a house in Orissa, a huge swimming pool. Huge, it was like an Olympic size length and depth, you know. And then, you know, there was water, nobody was using it. The children that the roost, and that water hardly got cleaned or changed. And that was stagnated swimming pool, stagnant water. So no stagnant water. Nowhere should water be stagnated. Water should always flow, always should be uh fresh right no afflictions to jala jala afflictions happen so much at vastu level that is why i'm taking the time out to mentioning this so it's like not just about uh you know chanting the mantras of lakshmi but you must do this vastu connection uh where uh, water jala tattva is concerned you have to remove the affliction to jala tattva nowhere should you have stale water water wherever it's kept in flask uh, near your bedside, in your coffee machine, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, wherever it is, it needs to be changed. Flower vases needs to be changed. All right? These are very, very basic remedies uh, for removing the affliction to water tattva, jala tattva, because jala is there everywhere in our house. Ensure that in your bathroom, in your kitchen, the water is flowing properly. There are no blockages over there, no sediments over there. We want the water to flow properly. But, and here is my catch to you, that water should not overflow. It should not flood. It should not be a tsunami. Look at Zaza Gabor, tsunami, too much of water. That's why we do not like Chandra in the seventh house. Too much Jala, too much Jala. So you'll have too much of relationships. Jala has to be balanced. 
All right, jala has to be balanced. It cannot be less and it cannot be too much that it has created such a wave that it has flooded you, multiple relationships flooded you, that is a wave of tsunami. We do not wish for a tsunami because a tsunami can cause destructions, right? I'm going to take a, 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 some questions now. Uh, let me just open the telegram and uh, I need to um, um, All right. Um, Bani, there's also questions in the question. Do you want me to post them into uh, Telegram or uh, can, you want, can you oh, see you know, I can't see the questions. I couldn't see it last time either. Okay. Let, um, I can only see your messages, not okay. the audience messages. I don't know why this is. I'm going to paste them in the chat or in the telegram group for you okay do it in the chat let me uh pause my screen sharing for a second yeah let me yeah please uh put it in the telegram uh okay there you go all right so there's a question from puja goel who says that what if tithi lord is at uh, rahu ketu axis then also do we consider shunya what do you mean Rahu Ketu axis? Uh, Puja, see, I'm very uh, particular in saying that the Tithi Lord should be conjoined Ketu. So if Tithi Lord is conjoined Ketu, it is in the Rahu Ketu axis, isn't it? Uh, did you uh, uh, listen to the first session uh, of the lecture? Because I don't wish to uh, repeat it. I have discussed this in great detail. Those who are born on Amavasya, so if Rahu is at 2A, no, no, Puja, I think you've not heard the first part of the lecture. Today's talk was just a continuation and finishing the topic and uh, discussing charts and discussing more uh, 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 taking questions. But I think you have not heard. Okay, do listen to the first part of the talk. Your, those questions would be uh, answered. Okay, there you go. Uh, Deborah has given this. Uh, what about the, oh, you have listened to it and you're saying that uh, I will listen again. So if you've listened to it, Pooja, I, uh, we did so many charts last time and I talked about it many times and I said it happens when seventh Lord is conjoined Ketu. So if seventh Lord is conjoined Ketu, that is the principle we were talking, then automatically uh, it's in the Rahu Ketu axis, isn't it? Because Rahu is always seven from Ketu. So that's the reason why I didn't quite uh, <clears throat> understand your question. She's typing something in answer. All right. Uh, let me uh, see the other questions posted by Maya and we'll come back to it. Okay. Um, Nicholas has asked a question. What about seventh Lord being Vargotama? Yes, Nicholas, seventh Lord can be Vargotama. There is uh, no problem with that. Seventh Lord Vargotama is, uh, means that that particular Graha is very good. You are asking, does it mean that they will have more relationship? No. Seventh Lord Bhargottava doesn't mean you'll have more relationship. It just means that the quality of the planet is very good. All right. Riddhi has asked a question. What if there are two Seventh Lords? Uh, yeah, exactly, Riddhi. I've answered your question. I think that's what we discussed. Uh, Liliana has asked a question. If Venus is exalted and in the sixth from here, is this also multiple marriages? Venus exalted, no conjunction. No, Liliana, you've raised a very, very important question. See, I'm glad because, you know, Deborah, these questions cannot be answered written. Uh, in the last chart, when I did Srila Prabhupada's horoscope, I gave you this example that from Arura Lagna, the horoscope, the uh, grahas, which are there from sixth from Arura Lagna, especially Rajas Guna, grahas. Here, let me just uh, 
share this with you back once more and um, go to Srila Prabhupada's horoscope. Okay, there you go. See what happens. You can see Mercury and Venus is in the sixth from Arura Lagna. Grahas which are there in six from Arura Lagna are actually given up. They are renounced. Here, what is being renounced? Mercury and Venus. What is Mercury and Venus? Mercury and Venus are the Rajas Grahas. All right. Here, what is the Rajas that Mercury and Venus are indicating? Venus is indicating love, sex, romance, marriage, right? And Mercury is indicating work, profession, work, job, money, our karma. It is said that when you are taking sannyas, these are the two things primarily that you are giving up. You are giving up your karma. We are people, you know, who have been vice presidents of banks and things like that, who have given up their job and then taken sannyas. You can, you can enter and do karma as a seva while in a mat. In the mat, if today the mat has a hospital, a charitable hospital, you are a doctor who's given up your practice and you are in the mat and you are actually uh, doing, uh, working as a doctor from the mat, which is fine. But if you are working as a doctor in a hospital and getting a salary, no, that is you are in a karma bhumi. You are in the karmic land. You're dealing with money, you're earning money and you're having a profession. Similarly, if you're married, then that, relationship is there uh, even if there is no sex you may be very close to the person you may have responsibilities for the person you can't give it up but of course celibacy is a very very crucial uh, indicator so mercury and venus six from arura lagna is a very uh, accepted and known combination for people who have renounced both love relationship as well as work so sadhus have this combination now, you have asked me what happens if somebody has a Venus in the six from Arura Lagna person who's a householder, then that person will have a tendency uh, to be celibate. We'll have a tendency to move away from Venus, move away. Say even inside a marriage, if such a person is also married, such a person will not indulge too much in romance, Indulge, not indulge too much in passion, not indulge too much in physical. They would want to give it up. They may do it, but we want to give it up. All right. We we'll want to want to have nothing to do with it. We'll try to move away. Now, if Shukra is exalted, then that's a double whammy out there. Because I told you that people who have Shukra exalted are actually looking for a very ideal partner. They are looking for somebody who's very, very ideal. So you're looking for God, right? Uh, so if you have, as a woman, Venus exalted in a horoscope, you are looking for God to get married. If you're a man with Venus exalted in your horoscope, you are looking for a goddess to get married. So you're hopping from relationship to relationship because you can't find a goddess. Goddess in every sense. I mean, I just don't mean goddess in looks, but really a goddess with that kind of values. Why? Because Venus in... Pisces, when it gets exalted, Venus is very pure because Venus doesn't want to be fallen. Venus in Kanya or in Virgo is a fallen Shukra. All right. It, it says that almost the extreme is of indulging in prostitution, where it is always wanting to become very pure. And Pisces, then it's like a lotus. Pisces is the ocean or the lake, and it is like a lotus. Like the lotus is grown in a swamp, and from the entire mud, the lotus comes up like a tall stem, and the lotus blooms. That's how it blooms in India for us. It grows, it blooms in the mud, in the swamp. So that is the, that mud, that swamp will not touch Venus because it has gone straight up and bloomed into a lotus that is exalted shukra so they are very pure so they are seeking purity or they want to get married they are seeking that kind of a person so now if you are saying a person has venus in six from el and that to exalted then the either the person is always seeking for that is seeking for a pure shukra so it will either shun that shukra or if it shuns the shukra and goes to a, another relationship, 
then in that relationship, it is actually uh, uh, trying to seek a different kind of a marriage or a different kind of relationship out there. Okay. Where has the question gone? Okay, I hope that answers your question, Liliana. And then Pooja has asked again that if Jupiter aspects on the combination of would be, I didn't talk about aspects. I'm talking about the actual association with Ketu, which make things, everything go poof. All right. Uh, my dear Maya has asked a question, how to count Bargottama seventh lot of, aha, Maya, very good question. So definitely <clears throat> one would be, of course, it's a single count. That means even if such a person has had many marriages or many relationships, only one would be like what the person considers as a serious marriage or, or the other extreme can be number 12. You know, usually when the count is one, we can also take number 12. So keep that in mind. That's why I said you have to be very re reflective and careful. See, when we, I've seen when we often uh, uh, talk about, uh, you know, these principles, people often apply those principles very blindly. So that's something you should not, you should take it. So yes, my either one or 12, you know why I'm saying that. Tithi um, Lord is a nakshatra of Ketu. Okay, let's, let's. I'm not going to avoid that question. Uh, Deborah from Paul Barker, can you please put up the mantra for afflicted shukra? Okay, I will type those couple of mantras, uh, which everybody can do. Uh, definitely the mantra I put up over there, everybody can do. Also simple mantras like Om Shri Mahalakshmi, and more people can do. I will type it out and put it over here. Uh, okay, a question from Sonam. Installing a fountain, aquarium, or a picture of a river or sea would also help uh, improve Jalatattva. Very good question, Soda. Also, preferably in the southeast direction as Venus gets exalted in Anadara. Okay, Soda. Two questions. Yes. Installing a fountain. Beautiful. Fountain is very, very nice. Aquarium, you are also having fishes over there. So that is Ketu, but that's okay. Picture of river or sea, yes. But you need to be very careful that that water in the fountain and aquarium is constantly cleansed and kept clean. You see, moment water is not kept clean, then Shukra gets afflicted. And believe me, amongst everything where Vastu gets affected, Vastu of Jala, Vastu of water is very critical. So first part of the question, yes. Second part of the question, no. Southeast direction is called the Agnia Kona. That is the Agni Kona. That is where we should ideally have our kitchen. A fire lit in the Southeast direction is very good. But Jala over there, no, Jala is not good. Jala is good in the Northern directions, okay? You have Venus MKS, so you're asking. Venus in MKS, <coughs> Uh, you should do avatara mantras over there. You need to see, have you examined your Tithi Lord? And have you, what is your Tithi Lord anyway? Uh, your Tithi Lord is moon, right? So you need to examine moon and you have moon here uh, in uh, the ninth house, there is Rishti of Mangal and there is Rishti of Rahu. So there is an affliction to your Chandra, right? although it is in Swashetra in Navamsha. So you need to do some remedy for the moon over there. Moon is also a source of water. And if you want to take your seventh laws, which is Saturn and Rahu, uh, then uh, Saturn is here with a bunch of planets. You need to look into this a little bit. And it is nature. Your Shani is not that big because it's nature in Navamsha. So that doesn't hold very well, but I think I discussed your chart in the group after the first session and I told you which you are not willing to accept Sonam. Uh, Seventh Lord Rahu has gone to the aid forming a Guru Chandala Yoga. I told you that this itself is the primary problem in the horoscope. All right, You really need to do a remedy for this. And the Janatattva uh, remedies for MKS Shukra? No, not so much. But yes, Shukra is also afflicted by Mangal, but not by either Rahu or Saturn. 
Okay. But yes, if you want to do a remedy for Venus, because it is a Karaka for the seventh house, definitely you can do it. In addition, you see, in addition, see Sonam's question on horoscope would be actually very, very interesting in the sense that when she had put up a chart in the group <clears throat> after, you know, the first session that we had, and straight away in her case that I saw, yes, Atithi Lord Chandra is afflicted. It is afflicted by Mangal and Rahu, all right. But you see here, the seventh Lord has gone to the eighth house, which is a very bad combination we discussed. And I told you that that is the Guru Chandala Yoga, the eighth Lord and seventh Lord together in the eighth house is Guru Chandala. Guru Chandala is not at all a good combination. I don't think I would look at anything else in the chart. For me, this is bad enough. So <clears throat> what she should do is definitely she would need to do mantra and remedies for this. She would also need to do Kumbha Vivaha. Okay. She will need to do a mantra for this Guru Chandala combination. All right. Karaka of seventh house is in Marana Karak Sthana. That is also gone. Okay. So she has all these multiple combination, although Venus is very nice in Navamsha in Taurus. So definitely she needs to do a package of remedies. One other seventh or second, not that great. I think it is in some not a very happy nakshatra and is debilitated in Navamsha. Definitely, and the Tithi Lord is afflicted as well. Definitely she needs to do a serious remedy for her seventh house. I would say mantra for this. Kumbha Vivaha plus yes, Janatattva rectification as you want to do installing fountain, etc. Picture of river or sea. I would not say sea because sea is more Pisces. We do not want to activate Pisces, but river is nice because river is more associated with the sign Cancer and moon, I think, is your Tithi Lord, right? So I think a uh, picture of a river flowing water is much more beautiful. Don't have a waterfall, but a beautiful, peaceful picture of a flowing river, not ocean. I don't want to go near the Pisces. A fountain, yes. Aquarium, no. Again, it is like a fish. Don't don't go for aquarium. I would say a fountain is a good idea. A picture of a river is a good idea. So now I hope that answers your question. All right. <clears throat> Artem has asked. Um, do people born in Ashtami always face Shunya in lesser or greater scale since Rahu is always opposite to Ketu and has it in Sama Saptaka, Rasha Drishti or even in Parivartana? Does Karka also bear? Okay. First question, no, Artem. I talked about Yuti. All right. I talked about a conjunction. So conjunction of Titi Lord with either Ketu or Eighth Lord is giving this Shunya effect. So I did not talk about Drishti. You earlier have tried to put in something to do with Upapada. And so it is affecting your wife. I did not answer those questions because I did not, because that was not a correct question. All right. I did, you cannot transpose that. You have to understand the essence of the point that we are talking about. It is a certain very essential component in your Rashi chart. All right, where your Tithi Lord is behaving in a certain way. Is he able to deliver the water in your chart or not? He's the water boy. And if there is the association with Ketu, the water is getting evaporated. Okay. Second question does cut. So when you said that that is related to Upapa, that it relates to your wife, I said no. Maybe it is in your wife's horoscope, but not because it is in your Upapa. <clears throat> Second question, does Karka also bear some afflictions in relationship having seventh and eighth Lord as one Graha? I did not understand this question. Okay, Artem, I did not follow it. Maybe you should write and explain what you mean by that. Uh, Deborah is saying that Nicholas still asks this. If you had seventh Lord, how do we take that for cow? Nicholas, I replied it to uh, Maya. Maya is a, is a very senior student. So I know Maya would understand what I meant because that answer is related to how we do Narayanasha counting, etc. All right, either one or 12. Paula asked for Kamalatmina remedy for problems with Shukra button transliteration. Paula, you know it, isn't it? Um, Akhil, Akhil, before anything, in every for forum you write my name, you write my name wrong. Every forum. 
So Shravani is a very different name from Sarvani. Shravani is from the mouth Shravana. So from Shravana it is Sarvani, uh, Shravani. That is a very common name. My name is Sarvani from Sarva, meaning everything, and it is Durga's name. Two absolutely different names, okay? Because you write Shravani in all the forums. So I'm sorry. Get your mercury rectified. Do you have a mercury issue? So your question is, please suggest what should I look into the chart of before getting married? I'm a yoga practitioner and that's what makes me inclined to relate more. No, no. What if Tithi Lord is also the eighth Lord and Lagna Lord? I could relate to Kaini and Alagna. No. Okay, please go through the first uh, day's talk, all right? Because the whole talk about Ketu, it was there. Please listen to it. That entire talk related to Ketu. Then after you've listened to it, I'll answer your questions in this forum. Okay? Because part of your question gets answered over there. Oh, yes, Deborah. Absolutely. Okay, since you asked the question, let me share more. You know, what happens, we sometimes, even as astrologers, when we are talking, we often shy away from talking about these things. But you see, Shukra remedies, Chandra remedies, there's so many other remedies, are so much a part of our life. So I do touch up my hair, you know, and uh, I do it because Guruji is very particular about it. And the reason he gives us, he says, no, you know, that you are activating Ketu out there, you know, with the white thing. So I do, and uh, I get very lazy about it, okay, about, you know, what to do, because I have long hair, I need to go to the salon, I can't do it myself. So I get very lazy. So sometimes, you know, when I'm less busy, I'm saying, okay, I have a PGCOA conference, I don't bother when I'm having classes, but when I have a conference, I should do it. I've been too busy, I could not do it. I'm thinking, you know, I'm catching a flight in a few days' time. I'm going for a small vacation to Orissa and maybe I should do it. I really have to make an effort to do it. It is an effort. Sometimes, Deborah, when you have Sare Sati going on, you know, Shani will force you to take a bath late, not wanting you to change your clothes, making you want to wear mismatched clothes, you know, green pajamas with, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, with an orange t-shirt, uh, not wanting to comb your hair, not wanting to do shinka, definitely. I'm really telling you, it's a very, it's something I learned through my Sarisati. And I told this to Guruji when he tried it. I said, it's, you have to force yourself to take your bath in time. You have to force yourself to ensure your, you know, you're done up properly, whatever way you do up. You don't have to go, out of the way to do something else. But believe me, color your hair, do a little shingar, whatever you like, you know, more or less, uh, you know, uh, take care of your clothes, take care of your jewelry. You know, I'm telling you, for me, it's a pain, but I do, I make an effort. I really made an effort to match my necklace. It's not easy for me. I make a huge effort because my Venus is heavily con conflicted. And though I've done remedy, I know constantly I need to do remedy to my Venus. I'm really revealing it. When you see me like that, like this, is because it's a remedy. You know, I have to ensure my Venus is okay. So, Deborah, go for it. All for it. I would just tell you. Really, we shy about talking about this, but I'm... We talk so much about Ketu. I'm really telling you that you should need to do this. Okay? Yes, Akhil, as I told you, listen to the first part that we talk. Rosemary has a question. If seventh Lord in Rashi is Shani, but in exchange with Mangal, yes, just like I did with uh, Prabhupada Strat. Do you use original position of Scorpio or Aquarius as counting position? from the Vamsha. Rosemary, does this apply to your chart? If it applies to uh, your chart, maybe, uh, I mean, you know, I'm sure I have your chart. I can take a look at it. Oh, so uh, you are Karka Lagna. Uh, your seventh Lord is Shani. And uh, in Rashi, where is your Saturn? I don't remember. Uh, it's in the fifth house. Is your Saturn in the fifth house in Rashi? If it is in the fifth house, then it'll be seven, four, five, six. It'll be in Scorpio, right? 
And then where is it in Navamsha? So if you can just tell me, Rosemary, where is it in the Rashi and where is it in the Navamsha? I think your Saturn is in uh, there. She's writing. Let me just wait to get her answer. Let me answer Rosemary. I think Rosemary Saturn, she's Karkalagna. All right. So her Saturn, I think, is in the fifth house. That means it's in Scorpio. So let us see. I, but I definitely don't remember where it is in Navamsha. Rosemary, in Navamsha, it is in Leo. Okay. But where is it in uh, Rashi chart? Where is it in the Rashi chart? Quickly, Rosemary, faster. Yes, Rashi in Scorpio. See, I remember you have Saturn in the fifth house. So Rashi is in Scorpio and Nav Navamsha it is in Leo. That's the natal thing. So uh, then if we come from Scorpio to Leo, that becomes 11, right? So now you are saying there is a Parivartana in Navamsha with Surya. So uh, it has gone to Makara. Is it in Makara? Is it in Makara or Kumbha after Parivartan? <coughs> in Aquarius. All right. It is in Aquarius. So you need to, yes, yes, count from Scorpio to Aquarius, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4. I think, Rosemary, I know your number of marriages. I think that works for you, roughly, more or less. Right? Yes, Deborah, if you really want to improve your Venus, it's hard work, but do it. Oh, my put together is a complete, it's a secret I'm giving away today. It's complete, uh, completely a very, very uh, pronounced effort. Very pronounced effort on my part. On Guruji's part, it is not a pronounced effort. Guruji is very particular of how he is in public. He has Shukra in Navamsha Lagna. He has Shukra in Kona, in Rashi. His Shukra is very nice. It may be Kambas, but in Navamsha Lagna, it's very nice. So he is very particular. So it's very interesting. I have become a little bit more conscious in particular because of him. Otherwise, I like to be uh, lazy, very lazy, you know? Uh, when I met him, I used to have a little bit more of a Ketu look just out of laziness. So he forced me. I used to wear a Ketu ring. He took it off. He said, your shukra will get, you know, subjugated. He didn't let me wear a cat's eye. And, uh, and he forced me on this, that to wear brighter colors, wear the jewelry, wear shoes, buy shoes, buy bags. I mean, can you imagine there are women who do that? And I mean, for me, it was enforced on me and it's really a pain when I'm packing my bag and going somewhere. Really, it's a, I'm really, really revealing the private part of my life to you. Huge Venus activity goes on there. Riddhi says, can you explain the meaning of the word Shringar? Okay. Shringar is a Sanskrit word. Shringar is a rasa. You know, there are Sapta rasas. There are seven rasas. Shringar is one rasa. Shringar means love. All right. Uh, so is the love. But Shingar, along with the love, also means the beautification a woman does for her love. So uh, the, uh, the skin care that you do, uh, the makeup that you put, how you do your hair, all right? The jewelry you put, uh, the clothes you put, that is Shingar. That every day after my bath, I'm applying cream to my face. I'm putting kajal in my eyes or coal in my eyes. I'm putting sindoor. I'm putting bindi. I'm putting powder. Maybe I'm putting makeup also. I'm combing my hair, doing my hair. I'm touching perfume. That is Shrikar. For a man, maybe he's combing his hair. He's putting, men also use perfume, putting their perfume, ensure they're properly dressed. That's called Shrikar. Shrikar is, Rosie, that was your question also. Shrikar, yes. Is Shrikar a rasa? So with that is associated with the rasa of love. It's a, it's a very strong uh, Sanskrit word, Shringara rasa. Okay? Preeti, just coming out of Vimshotri Ketu Mahadasha of my husband. Oh, interesting line you said, Preeti. Coming out of Vimshotri Ketu, MD of my husband. No, your husband is running of finishing Ketu Mahadasha. So I can relate to all the Shukra talk and the need for it. It needs uplifting at home and me. Yes, 
Okay, you're welcome, Priti. Ah, Dhumavati worship. See, Vijay, why do you want to do Dhumavati worship? I'm very interested to know this. Why did you ask about Dhumavati worship? Where is Ketu in your chart? Where is Venus in your chart? If you're here right now, quickly type it out. Okay? Sonam, uh, if Bargotama, yes, I replied to uh, uh, Maya. Uh, it can be one or it can be 12. Okay? See the other parameters. Okay, Vijay, you have Venus and Ketu together in Lagna. And what is your Lagna? <laughs> this question of Venus and Ketu I talked about. See, that's why this discussion was very important. This doesn't come out of the slide. Let me see what his lagna is. I'm very interested. Mercury, Venus, Ketu in Leo lagna. Simha lagna. Wonderful. <laughs> Mercury is your eighth lord, right? Um, Venus and Ketu in lagna. Ketu is very powerful in Leo lagna. We consider Ketu to be like, uh, uh, like Ucha. You know, like exalted out there. Venus Ketu over there is, uh, you have to see, I would see that Ketu is more powerful than Venus in this case. Okay. And if Ketu is more powerful, then Ketu, if you do not go in Ketu's path, then Ketu causes disruption. That is a single point of view. You either go in my path, what I want you to do, be spiritual, meditate, stay away too much from relationships and call with wife or whatever. Then I'm happy with you. And if you're not doing that, I'll, you know, cause a damaka and smoke everything up. Venus is over there in Lagna. You should, if you are married, and uh, you should definitely need to do Shukra remedy. Uh, Shukra, as in Lagna, is a Shubhagraha. Mercury is over there. Maybe you need to do... Um, Mercury Venus remedy. Okay. Uh, I would be very interested if you put up your horoscope up in the group. You are facing the Venus Ketu that I was talking about to everybody right now. Okay. <coughs> Nita. Uh, okay. Can we relate to? I'm Taurus Lagna, Mars and MKS. Got so Ketu becomes the seventh lord, and my eighth lord Jupiter is the Tithi lord. Mm -hmm. Ketu is dominating the chart, but my Venus is in Digbala and Bargottama. So I've been doing all the Venus. Yes, 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 Mita. Venus is very important, very important for you. So Vijay, I would love to see your chart. Look at Vijay. We were talking about Venus and Ketu, and this Venus and Ketu. So Venus Ketu relationship is very, very interesting. Very. And as I said, Saturn Venus relationship is very different, which when Saturn is strong, uh, Saturn and Venus together with each other, Saturn is a very cold planet. Um, Saturn also does not like physical relationship. Many people with Shani and Shukra together, Shani Shukra in Upapada, Shani in Upapada, you, there is a tendency, there is a coldness that is different. There is not much passion. Uh, either the native or the native spouse, they do not like to have too much of sexual uh, encounters, you know, frigidity, things are frozen. That aspect is there when Saturn and uh, uh, Venus are there together. So, uh, 43 years of marriage, yes, Shukra is in Lagna you've had. But you have had, uh, Vijay, the struggle with Venus and Ketu. See, I don't know your whole horoscope. That's why I say, if you put up, you don't need to give the birth data if you don't want, but you can just put up the picture of the Rashi and Navamsha, then we'll get a very clear picture. Venus and Lagna, Mercury, Digbal and Lagna, Shukra and Lagna is very, very strong, of course. Of course it is, it will show. But what I'm saying is there is a tussle between Venus and Ketu out there. There is, knowingly or unknowingly, there is a tussle. So don't give your birth data if you don't want, but just put up the picture of the two charts and we can know what it is. <clears throat> All right. So what we can do, Deborah, 
uh, I can end here and then uh, we can take it up the rest and you know we can continue the discussion in the group uh, is that uh, yes I think that, yeah. I think that's yeah. good we'll okay. get BJ's chart and answer more questions thank you so yeah. much uh, for every everything uh, the, these two uh, sessions have been wonderful um, full of information and fun informal talk as well and insights into your life which is really a special thing so thank you very much thanks everybody thank you uh, thank you Deborah uh, it's a pleasure always to uh, speak for PJCOA and thank you everybody namaste, namaste.